Jesus was brought up in the town of Nazareth, in the district of Galilee. Because his earthly father, Joseph, was a carpenter, he too was trained in the skill of carpentry. Much of his early life must have been spent studying what we call the Old Testament and acquiring wisdom. At the age of 12, Jesus was found at the temple in Jerusalem, talking with the teachers. Everyone was amazed by his knowledge and understanding. It was around the age of 30 that Jesus began his intense ministry to the people. After 40 days of prayer and fasting, he began to preach the good news of the kingdom of God throughout Galilee. He soon had 12 close companions, the disciples, and together they went about cleansing the lepers, healing the sick, and even restoring the dead to life. It wasn't merely to preach and to heal that he came. It wasn't to set an example of the perfect life. He came because of obedience. Obedience to his Father's will. As it is written, Though being in very nature God, he did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. From Nazareth in Israel his fame soon spread abroad Some said he was the carpenter's son Some said he was the Lord Many people followed him When he touched them, they were healed And he pleased the Father Cause he did the Father's will by John in Jordan his ministry began God said behold my son with whom I'm pleased for following my plan he spoke about forgiveness said love instead of kill and he pleased the father cause he did the father's will Yes, he pleased the Father, no matter what the cost. He pleased the Father, and he came to save the lost. Yes, he pleased the Father, forsaking what he'd fear. He pleased the Father, cause he did the Father's will. close behind and he spoke about a kingdom not everyone would find but the people that he came for were soon to have him killed because he pleased the father and he did the father's will yes he pleased the father no matter what the cost, he pleased the Father, and he came to save the lost. Yes, he pleased the Father, forsaking what he'd feel. He pleased the Father, cause he did. 
did the Father's will. Yes, he pleased the Father, no matter what the cost. He pleased the Father, and he came to save the lost. Yes, he pleased the Father, forsaking what he feel. He pleased the Father, and he did the Father's will. Jesus and his disciples made their way to Jerusalem for Passover, where a large crowd came to meet them. Jesus was sitting on a donkey. They laid down their cloaks to cushion his ride. Some of them waved palm leaves in the air and shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. This fulfilled the word of Zechariah. See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey. The whole of Jerusalem was stirred and wondered who this man could be. Who is this man who enters the town on a donkey? Why do the crowds Flock to his side and applaud him. They're laying down palm leaves to cushion his way. A king or a prophet, I heard someone say. Where does he come from? Why is he here? Why do the people cheer? Hosanna! Hosanna, we sing, Hosanna, we worship the King. Blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, we sing, Hosanna, we worship the King. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Who is this man who holds out his hands to the people? Love in his smile. So humble, so kind, and so gentle. Why would this person have come to this place with love in his heart and peace on his face? Could this be Jesus who makes blind men see? No wonder the people sing. Hosanna! Hosanna, we sing, Hosanna, we worship the King. Blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, we sing, Hosanna, we worship the King. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord.
Jesus spent the next few days in the area of the temple, healing those who were sick and teaching. He told many parables, and crowds gathered around to hear him. He spoke with authority, as if he really knew what he was talking about, and many believed that he was the Messiah. The religious leaders tried to trap Jesus with their devious questions. They even tried to make him say that he was the Son of God, so that they could hold the charge of blasphemy against him. But Jesus replies, left them speechless. Jesus warned the people about the Pharisees, who appeared righteous and holy on the outside, but whose hearts were filled with greed and pride. He challenged their religiosity and exposed their hypocrisy. They knew the prophecies concerning the Messiah and yet were blinded to their fulfillment unfolding before their eyes. It is sad that it was the religious leaders of the day who plotted the death of Christ and that it was one of Jesus' own disciples, Judas Iscariot, who agreed to betray him. just 30 pieces of silver, the Son of God would be handed over to the chief priests and elders for judgment. It was the feast of the Passover. Innocent lambs were sacrificed. 
a prophetic picture of the one who would be sacrificed once and for all to pay for the sins of mankind. Following the Passover meal, Jesus and his disciples went to the Garden of Gethsemane. Stay here and watch with me, he asked them. He was deeply troubled and in such anguish that his sweat fell like droplets of blood. His disciples slept as Jesus prayed. My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Jesus, praying in the garden to his Father God. While he wept, his disciples slept, supposedly keeping guard. But they ran away when the soldiers came, when Judas kissed, so to betray. His friends all took their flight, and he was led into the night. Standing before Pilate, the accusations grew. I find no fault in Jesus, he's perfect through and through. But Jesus stood still in silence while the mob cried, Crucify! And Pilate at last relented. Again. The soldiers whipped Jesus and placed a crown of thorns on his head. They made him carry his own cross through the city. Some in the crowd shouted abuse and jeered. Others stared in disbelief. Staring as I struggle with this cross No more you shout, hail Jesus, oh love Is this the cost? Weep not for my suffering Or for this blood I spill It will be for your salvation It is my father's will I can hardly keep on moving As blood runs in my eyes Your cast is cut right through me It is for you I die Two criminals were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him. The soldiers cast lots for his clothing. Those who passed by hurled insults at him. Jesus, filled with love and compassion for the crowd, prayed, Father, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. You gather round my cross And still my children mock see my tears Tears not just of pain but of love Yes, of love Can you see my outstretched arms They'll still welcome you 
despite the thing you've done. Believe in me, look in my face, I'm dying in your place. Believe in me, look in my face, I'm dying in your place. Believe in me, look in my face, I'm dying. Yes, I'm dying in your place. At the sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. The curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, Father into, into your hands, hands I commit, commit my, my spirit. spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away. The tomb was empty. They were deeply concerned. Suddenly, two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women fell to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Look, I am alive. The price is paid for sin. Death has been defeated. Now new life can begin. I died in your place. Took all your disgrace Now me embrace Look in my face Can you see the love? Can you see the love? Can you see God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 